Regardless of how many dusty mummies you've watched Brendan Fraser blast apart with a shotgun, odds are you have no idea what ancient Egypt was really like. So it might surprise you to learn that everyday life in the time of the pharaohs was pretty modern in a lot of ways. Today, we're exploring what everyday life was like for ancient Egyptians. Education and medicine were remarkably sophisticated, and men and women enjoyed an equality under the law that wouldn't be seen in other societies for centuries to come. But before we get started, make sure you subscribe to the Weird History channel. Now, let's go to Egypt. In addition to being the primary source of water for crop irrigation and clothes making, the Nile River was basically the interstate in ancient Egypt. Both the lower and upper class alike traveled along it in simple skiffs and wooden boats to get from place to place. It was also used to transport the heavy stone blocks used to build the pyramids and to ferry the bodies of dead nobles in elaborate funeral processions. But rather than having to keep an eye on their speed and watch for state troopers, the Egyptians had to constantly be on guard against hippo and crocodile attacks. The pharaoh Menes was killed by a hippo while traveling on the Nile, and it's been suggested that a hippo may have maimed King Tut in a similar attack leading to his premature death. Insert hungry hungry hippos joke here. Beer making was first recorded 18,000 years ago in ancient Egypt. Like my uncle Gilbert, Egyptians loved beer. Beer was considered a staple meal, which is why both children and adults drank it and wages were paid in brewable grain. That said, beer in ancient Egypt wasn't like the stuff you order by the glass at the local pub. It was more like a thick, sweet soup with a lower alcohol content so you could have a bowl or two for dinner without getting into a drunken fistfight with a hippo. Despite what you may have assumed, ancient Egyptians practiced a number of advanced medical fields, including dentistry, gynecology, surgery, and even autopsy, although maybe that last one isn't too surprising to anyone. Medical procedures were a mix between medical treatment and religious ceremony, but weren't restricted to the upper class. Healthcare was apparently available to everyone, including slaves. And hygiene was a big deal in ancient Egypt, because the Egyptians had realized that walking around with a three-inch layer of sweat-ripened filth clinging to your skin was a petri dish for disease. As a result, they bathed constantly, using soap made from salt and animal and vegetable oils, and it was commonplace for both men and women to completely shave off all their body hair, even the hair on their heads. The Egyptians also made fragrances. Perfumes brewed from lily, myrrh, and cardamom were common, and they may have even created the first deodorant using a mixture of citrus and cinnamon. We call that scent breakfast. Despite the undeniable anatomical knowledge the ancient Egyptians possessed, they hadn't figured out everything about the human body. They believed that the mind was located in the heart, or ib, and that all thoughts originated from it. The heart was also thought to be the seat of intense emotions like love, sadness, and bravery, a belief shared by almost every culture. As for the brain, the ancient Egyptians clearly didn't think much of it because it was simply thrown in the trash during the mummification process. Maybe they thought it was just skull filling. The judicial system in ancient Egypt was split between two courts, the Kenbet and the Great Kenbet. The lower Kenbet basically dealt with misdemeanors, while the Great Kenbet was reserved for serious crimes like robbery and murder. Typically, the pharaoh's vizier ruled over each case, with ultimate judgment coming from the pharaoh himself. But in especially complicated cases, the courts would defer to the wills of the oracles, or since the oracles never bothered to show up, the statues of the oracles. In these cases, both the prosecution and the defense teams would write out their arguments on a slip of paper and place them on opposite sides of the street. Whichever direction the statues appeared to lean more towards was declared the winner, and the defendant was judged accordingly. That is the most elaborately arbitrary system of justice ever. As we mentioned earlier, gynecology was a medical field present in ancient Egypt. But much like the heart and brain debate, the ancient Egyptians hadn't quite worked out all the kinks yet. They knew that sex led to childbirth, but they believed the womb was connected to the alimentary canal, the path that carries the food from your mouth to your anus. So in order to test whether or not a woman was fertile, a clove of garlic was inserted into a woman's hoo-hoo. And if the garlic could be smelled on her breath, it meant she was able to bear children. If the garlic couldn't be smelled, that meant there was some kind of blockage or obstruction, and kids were out of the picture. While garlic is a fine ingredient in penne pasta, we cannot recommend its use in this scenario. 
Board games were a popular pastime in ancient Egypt, and easily the most popular one was a game called Senate. Senate was played on an elongated chess-style board, with each player rolling dice or throwing sticks to move their pieces. Senate was so popular that paintings of Nefertari playing the game have been discovered on ancient temple walls. Archaeologists have yet to discover evidence of anyone playing Hungry Hungry Hippos, a game just hit too close to home. In modern cultures, male infants are circumcised at birth, but in ancient Egypt, it was seen as more of a rite of passage into manhood, and as such, it wasn't performed until much later. There are temple paintings depicting priests performing the procedure on boys in their mid to late teens, in case you were wondering whether or not nightmares existed in ancient Egypt. History is unclear about the cultural significance of circumcision in ancient Egypt. For instance, most pharaohs were circumcised, but the procedure was also done to humiliate captives and mark slaves. Confusing. Makeup was ubiquitous in ancient Egypt. Men were not afraid to dip into the mid-2000s Pete Wentz catalog to wear some pretty amazing guy liner. The eye makeup was made from grinding lead ores into a substance called coal to produce what was essentially lead paint. The makeup used by ancient Egyptians was high in nitric oxide, which boosts the immune system and helps fight off disease. So the eyeliner might have had the added effect of protecting the eye from infections while hopefully balancing out that whole lead poisoning thing. Temples in ancient Egypt were true community centers in that they acted both as places of worship and as depositories for the nation's wealth. That meant for most of the period, each temple was also a granary. Remember earlier when we said that people were paid in beer? That's partially because beer is delicious, but mostly because money just didn't exist yet. Coinage didn't appear in Egypt until much later, which meant grain was the currency everyone used. Administrators at each temple would dole out grain accordingly to pay everyone's wages, with a low-income job bringing home about 10 loaves of bread and two jugs of beer. Despite living next to one of the mightiest rivers in the world, people in ancient Egypt didn't eat much fish. In fact, they ate very little meat at all. The ancient Egyptian diet consisted mostly of wheat and barley, which makes complete sense when the majority of your population is paid in bread and beer. Fruits and vegetables such as celery, dates, pomegranates, and of course garlic were also plentiful, and even though meat wasn't common, it was still occasionally enjoyed during festivals. Or if you were rich, pretty much whenever you felt like having a steak. If you've ever lived close to the equator or watched Miami Vice in the 80s, you're familiar with the appeal of linen clothing. Linen is specifically good for hot weather because it's a thin, breathable fabric that feels cool to the touch, and the ancient Egyptians made plenty of it. Linen was made by picking flax plants from the banks of the Nile and spinning them into threads that could be then woven into cloth. In addition to simply being a practical garment for the desert climate, the fabric was also a symbol of status. The finer the weave and the lighter the color, the more important you were in the social hierarchy. In ancient Egypt, both sexes appeared to be equal as far as the law was concerned. Women could buy and sell property, including both slaves and land, and were also able to file lawsuits and petition for divorce. Additionally, the Egyptians did not practice female infanticide, which indicates baby girls were just as valued as baby boys. This seems like the absolute bare minimum of gender equality until you consider that the practice was common in other societies at the same time period. When the Greeks conquered Egypt in 332 BCE, they were surprised to find that Egyptian women had more independence and civil liberty than Greek women, which we assume some Greek general discovered when he tried to give an Egyptian noblewoman his drink order. Education was a privilege exclusively reserved for the children of upper-class citizens. Students studied a variety of subjects that more or less resembled a modern curriculum, including reading and writing, mathematics, history, science, and medicine. The wealthiest kids, such as the pharaoh's sons and the sons of nobility, went to the prince's school. But scholarships did exist that allowed certain exceptional lower-class students to attend. It's unclear whether the scholarship was awarded in beer. Ancient Egypt was surprisingly modern in several ways, allowing its citizens to lead lives not totally unrecognizable from the ones we lead today. Would you like to live or walk like an Egyptian? Let us know in the comments below and check out some of these other videos of our weird history.